Let's learn about reading comprehension. Have you ever read a book or listened to someone read a book and you struggled to pay attention? Have you ever realized you have no idea what a book you just read was about? You're not the only one. Kids and even adults have trouble remembering what they're reading. When you understand what you read, that is called comprehension. Comprehension or comprehending is the ability to understand written words. The reason we read is to comprehend. Authors write books and they don't want us to just read the words. They want us to hear their story or read their facts. Books tell us things and we have to pay attention to what that is. But how do we do that? Let's look at some steps to comprehension. First, you probably already learned your alphabet and how to decode or read a lot of words. Read these words with me. Clap, rip, web, gum. Great. Once we know how to read words, we need to make sure that we can comprehend what each word means. I bet you knew the meaning of these words. The next step is to understand sentences that you read. The boy plays with his dinosaurs. As we read, it's very important to understand what the author is saying, sentence by sentence, as they tell the story. When authors write stories, they write because they want us to understand and enjoy their story. Now, we're going to go through four keys to make sure that you're comprehending as you read. First, keep your brain in the book. Let me explain. As you read, think about the book. Before you turn the page, ask yourself, what was this page about? One way to know if your brain is in the book is if you have a picture in your head of what's happening. Can you imagine what's going on? Another key to comprehending as we read is to reread aloud when something doesn't make sense or it's confusing. Here's a funny example of how reading aloud helps things make sense. If you look at this gibberish, it doesn't make sense. But when I say it out loud, does it sound like something? Dish, his, sill, he. Dish, his, sill, he. <gasps> Do you hear it? This is silly. Now that's a silly example, but it's amazing how much more sense something makes when you say it out loud. The third key to comprehending as you read is to ask questions. If you have no questions, then we have to wonder if you're understanding what you read. We almost always have questions as we read. They may start with words such as why, who, when, or how. When we're asking questions, we're thinking about the book. Even when your question is just, what happened? That shows that your brain is in the book. You're working to comprehend. The last key to comprehending as you read is to predict. Predicting means you're guessing or imagining what's going to happen or what will come next. It's fine if you're wrong. But if you find yourself guessing what will happen or what will be on the next page, you can know that you're doing great comprehending. Let's end by taking these skills and putting them together into practice with a short story. Meg went on a walk by the ocean. She was looking for seashells. Remember, one key is to keep our brain in the book. Is your brain thinking about the story? Maybe you even have an image in your head of Meg walking along the ocean. Suddenly, she saw something bright and shiny poking out from the sand. Remember, reread aloud when you're confused. Sometimes you might read in your head, but reading out loud really helps confusing parts. Suddenly, she saw something bright and shiny poking out of the sand. She grabbed it and found that it was a beautiful necklace. She couldn't believe how lucky she was to find this. Oh, ask questions. What questions do you have? I'm wondering whose necklace is it? What will she do with it? Is anyone else there with her? It's okay if you don't have the answer. 
The best questions often are difficult to answer. Meg started running back to her mom when she saw a lady who looked sad looking down at the sand. Lastly, we should predict. Hmm, what do you think will happen next? I think maybe this lady is the one who lost her necklace. I think Meg will ask and see what she's looking for. And then I'm supposed to turn the page and keep reading and see if I'm right. But unfortunately, we're out of time. Remember, authors write stories for you to enjoy and understand. They don't want you to just hear blah, blah, blah. Authors want you to keep your brain in the book. Read it aloud, especially when you're confused. Authors want you to ask questions. And they love it when their readers predict what will happen next. Getting lost in a great book is one of the best places to be.